Well, hello there, YouTube. This is just a little update on Pico Chess or the Chestnut Air. I did some modifications in the meantime. Well, the last video is uh, over one year old now. The first and most prominent change I did was I built a chess set on wooden pieces with the sensors of each of those uh, original plastic chess pieces um, by myself so actually it's pretty easy um, what you have to do is when you remove the felt you will see um, a hole and in this hole is um, the original sensor inside of a, of a little rubber dome when you use a tweezer you can get it easily out effectively you have to do this for all the chess pieces that you want what i did is i placed each of the sensors directly on the sensor board when you have all of these then you can start modifying the the wooden chess pieces the chess pieces i used are from from philos yeah it's very universal here's the the article number if you are interested where the the king height is 65 millimeters when you compare this so let's see if I can hold. Yeah, it's it's very similar. And if I get a, a king, it's a little bit taller, but two or three millimeters. So very nice. It looks nice. It feels nice. And after a bit of tweaking, everything is working fine. So I can recommend to do this conversion. You need a bit of patience to do this. You need quite some tools so in my case um, i had to drill into the wooden chest pieces um, in my case those wooden pieces were filled with two or three metal weights but these middle those middle weights were a few millimeters um, away from the from the bottom of the piece i glued in the little sensors inside the, yeah, you can see it actually by the reflection the top of the sensor that is upside down glued in into those chest pieces has to be on on the same level as the, the surrounding wood structure. When you glue the new felt on it, it will be the same level. And this is because um, the range of those RFID chips, of those sensors, is actually not that great. So you really have, I don't know, one or maximum two millimeters of air distance. The, the chestnut can recognize those. After I glued in the sensor on each chess piece, I put it on the board and uh, used the board editor function of the chestnut app to check if each piece and sensor is recognized on the fields. Because you have to be a bit careful, but um, even if you create a little shortage with a tweezer, you can safely remove it and then everything works out fine. The next part, the next thing that I did was I built myself a DGT Pi. This is a DGT 3000 clock. It has some slight modifications. If you take a look on the left side of the device, you will see, actually this is a two part design. So you have the, the clock on the top and you have a 3D printed base, which hosts a Raspberry Pi 3B. And uh, actually you will find a lot of instructions online if you want to do such conversion yourself. So you have the plus 3.3 volts and you have the, the ground wire connecting directly to the Raspberry Pi. You have three additional wires going. Effectively, one of those is ground as well. But um, the two, two others are I2C I is the correct pronunciation, or I2C, it is written. This is where the original clock had a socket for a connection cable for DGT boards. And um, what you do effectively is you supply the DGT 3000 with 3.3 volts from the Raspberry Pi. You provide a ground and you provide the SDA pin and the SLC pin from the Raspberry Pi via GPIO connectors directly to the board. You need Raspberry Pi 3B. It, on, it also works with the Raspberry 4. The Raspberry Pi 4 has a lot more horsepower. You can emulate the graphical chess engines with Wine and the, the desktop because um, if you use a Raspberry Pi 3B like this one with one gigabyte of memory, then you only can use the web interface via external computer. Or in this case, now that you installed the DGT3000 on top of it, you will use this. And um, the nice thing is breakout for, for the audio, for the HDMI, if you want to use external monitor. When you use an external power, so you can use the, the, the standard power supply. Or you use like what I use now, power bank. And there we are, Pico Chess. 
standard because this is um yeah yeah stockfish no no a uh, system we want display the eboard is not a dgtp it's a chestnut okay eboard dgtpy system has restarted itself so i guess it waits for me to start yeah king spawn and as you can see is recognized and because of the the display um it's actually quite nice to do one feature that i wish for and that i um, tried to implement myself was the usage of the levers so in the standard mode as it is right now if i act if i actuate the lever now if i do this it says now is the time of player black because now it um, reversed the roles of the player now player white and is played by stockfish so stockfish gives this and now i'm the player of black and yeah this time is running down and i say let's use this the board recognizes automatically that um, there was a change and now stockfish is uh, thinking and if i activate again the roles are reversed Pico Watcher, Pico Coach, Lift. Okay, this is interesting. Pico Coach, Lift. Okay, then we activate this. Let's say we, we choose the standard opening here. Now I want to ask the Pico Chess system for support. In this case, uh, when you use the setting Lift, then you just lift up your own king. Ah, okay, so you have to put back the... Okay, so now I get recommendation move to d4 which would be this or move one of the knights this is a very modern way of a chess computer so this is actually the amount you pay it's incredible what you get for for this uh, amount of money and because 30 years ago this is what chess computers looked like and um, even though this one also has batteries in it and um but it does not use sophisticated RFID technology like this. Um, so each of those, one of those 64 fields is with a pressure sensor. The little plastic figures, a very little magnet. Um, they're actually quite nice looking, but still it's plastic. The usage of with, with those buttons and everything is completely old school, so to say. And what you have here with, with with the help of Pico Chess, with the help of Raspberry Pi and uh, very good hardware. It's incredible. So, um, thank you very much. That's just what I wanted to show you. And uh, I hope it gives you inspiration to do something on your own. What you also could do be order a complete um, set of those chess sensors, of those chess piece sensors, RFID sensors. I don't know what the price was. 30 or 40 euros or something like this and um, for this price you already get the a pretty decent wooden chess set and um, you just have to modify them it's a bit finicky i'm very happy with this so yeah just wanted to show you so thank you very much i will post a few links in the description always take a look on the pico chess google group it's very active and um, actually I'm doing a bit of hacking or improving the, the Pico Chess software myself, but this may be stuff for, for another video um, because this is very technical what I uh, do there. And I don't know if, if there's that much interested in it. So thank you very much. And uh, I hope you have a nice day and enjoy a game of chess. Goodbye.